Any questions, please? Kind of had pretty good, could, like you're in pretty good shape, and then the last seven minutes came around. Sure. No, we obviously talked about that after the game. You have to give, start by giving California a lot of credit. You know, they're a good team. They continued to battle. They made shots. Um, as for us, obviously, you know, coming out of the eight-minute timeout, we wanted to finish in a better fashion. Didn't think we responded real well when they changed defenses. Didn't convert some free throws as well as some transition opportunities. And almost in a blink of an eye, they turned out to be, you know, four-point swings. You know, I think back to, um, you know, when John looked like he was going to have a layup. It was a no call. They had two guys cherry pick. They threw it down the court. Layup. That took about a second. And it just seemed like those kinds of circumstances, as well as us not responding the best way possible um, to their change in defenses, and you know we were right back, you know, hanging on for dear life. But you know that aside, you know I think our team uh, played an excellent game. Uh, we got a great contribution once again from the ultimate team player, Ruslan. I thought his footwork and his timing in the low post was outstanding. Had five offensive rebounds. Everybody remembers the big ones. He got tipping it out to his teammates. And then, of course, Evan was really scoring and, and shooting well today, as well as taking it to the basket. Um, after performing really well in the turnover category last week, you know, that bug beat us again, and we were only, it was only offset by the fact that our opponents had nine more than we typically force. You mentioned Ruslan. How, how big of an advantage is that when you get a big guy down low, you know, causing problems on both ends of the floor? Well, I mean, it, it's an important part of the game. Uh, you know, to have someone protect the basket defensively, to have someone score offensively, um, you know, that's, that's really important. And, you know, there's good front court players in our league. And Cal's front court guys, you know, Solomon, Kravish, they can really step away from the basket and shoot, which, you know, causes some issues with rotations defensively. Um, but I just couldn't be more proud of Ruslan, and I know I continue to, you know, bring this up, but it, it I think, deserves mention. He's a young man who's a senior who has never been center stage but has always been an unconditionally great teammate. So he's like a constant reminder to everybody in our program of the beauty of being unselfish. And now to see him have these kinds of contributions down the home stretch of his senior year is about as good as it gets for a coach. So how much does it help when you don't have to rely on Carrick or Jahi to have to kind of carry the offensive of load to rely on Evan or John or whoever I mean, just like in life, um, you know, balance is probably a good thing. You know, we all want to have a great player who can get on a given night a lot of buckets, who can create his own shot, and I don't mean to diminish the importance of that. We saw Jahi have a spectacular game against UW last Saturday. But, you know, if you have a really good team and, and you can have other guys um, create balance, you become that much more difficult to defend. Your team was uh, very efficient uh, early on. Can you talk about just what contributed to that? Yeah, you know, our guys, have, I think, have been doing a good job of moving the ball and sharing the ball. I, I don't ever sense with our guys anybody making a play because it's their turn, ever. Now, once in a while, we'll take a bad shot because guys may be brimming with confidence and think they can make a play. That's quite a different intention and mindset than someone saying, you know, I haven't got one in a while or I need more than I'm getting. And so it's been a team offensively that, you know, almost without condition has played unselfishly. And I think as the season's gone on, our ball movement reflects that. Having said that, did you think, I don't know, it was maybe right after the eight-minute timeout, and I know the four-minute timeout didn't happen until about 1.30 left or so. But the ball got a little sticky in that time? Um, I, I thought maybe we um, were a little bit like um, somebody who um, is forced to drive a stick shift that never had a real good lesson. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I thought we got 
we got caught in between with the lead of should we be patient? We don't want a quick shoot. And then they changed to the zone. And, you know, I probably could have done a better job with our guys of just making sure they knew we were we still had to play and, and, and be in attack mode. I think I probably contributed to some of their hesitancy by not amplifying that mindset. Carrick got poked in the eye. He got poked in the eye and he um, was seeing, having a hard time either seeing peripherally or seeing a little bit double. Um, but I just spoke with the doctors and he seems to be recovering fine.